Hi everyone, Adrian here and welcome to World Bush and Grid. Today, very excited for this episode, I'm bringing you with me on the water and I'm catching landlocked salmon and essentially I'm showing you how I do it. To catch a landlocked salmon, or also known as Wenanish, you need to understand a little bit their mindset. Essentially, they're part of a trout and salmon family, so they have a very very high predatorial drive and their main source of food are other small fishes, right? The, you know, smelt, minnows, this is what they thri thrive on. So knowing what they eat will influence the type of lure that you're going to bring with you on the water. But before thinking even about the lure, we need to know where, where are they, right? Because you can have the best lure in the world, if you don't know where to fish, you're never gonna catch one. So, where are they? They are not evenly distributed everywhere. You will have specific river, specific lake, where they actually hang out. And this is where you need to target them. Um, fishing on the lake, with a boat, trolling, is a very efficient way of catching landlocked salmon. A lot of people are catching them by the tons every year. Me, my favorite way is on the river. And to me, it's, it's a much more, and that's to me, it's a much more active way of fishing. You know, it's a lot of exercise, wading through the river. I love it, that con direct contact with nature. That's, this is what I'm after. I'd like to get my feet wet and fighting the currents, fighting the, the slippery rock and trying to get my fish that way, you know, up close and personal, <laughs> so to speak. All right, so in the river, where do you find them? Usually, you want to find them near fast-moving water, highly oxygenated wa water, close to food source. So if you can't find these, you will find fish, no problem. And to me, it starts with fast-moving water, white waters, waterfalls. When I can't find those on the map, those are the places that I will start, that I will target first. And it's so far so good, it has never failed me, right? The... The salmon, that salmon, that when an ish, they're built for speed. They have explosive power. They're super fun to catch, pound for pound. I've, this is the strongest fish I've experienced here in north, uh, northeast of America. Oh my god, it's strong. It's so strong. And fresh water. I'm not talking about salt water. Salt water, it's a different ball game. But the one an ish, you know, like a four, five pound one an ish will make you feel that you just got a 10, 12 pound <laughs> north pike. That's how strong they are, you know, the, yes, they will tire you. My arm is dead! And I shouldn't forget to mention, they're also delicious. Uh, you know, they, they, they have a very, they're right smack in the middle between trout and salmon to me. The lure, you know, you, you have a good river, you know where to find them, uh, you, you have the perfect spot, now you need to throw the perfect lure. So there are four categories of lure that I like to use. The first one that I think is super efficient are the jerk baits. There is one lure that I have absolute confidence in and it's the live target smelt and it goes to three to four feet uh, deep. Super super efficient. See how it looks like a smell, an actual smelt? This is incredible. Incredible. Um, in the same family, you know, depending on what's available in your area, Try to target jerkbait that looks like these. And by like these, what I mean is, you know, they have uh, some pink, purple tone, uh, highly reflective, a lot of, uh, you know, silvery materials on them, like all three, all these three, like all their belly are silvered. Uh, this one has a little bit of gold on the top. Same with this guy here, a little bit of gold. Actually, this one too has some gold reflection, very fainted, but there, there is a little bit. I don't know if the camera can pick that up and you know some patterns but you still have like some blue pink purplish tone uh, and golden here when you buy usually when you buy those jerk baits they come with treble hook but i'm in the process of replacing my treble hooks with single hooks um, i just find it more um, you know it's nicer to the fish and my success rate is the same so i think it's a bonus here Jerk bait, so highly effective, but also highly expensive, and you know, those are average 10 to $15 each. If you lose one, you cry a river every time. Uh, if jerk bait is not your style, you can skip jerk bait. I still recommend to have one or two, but you can skip jerk bait altogether. And I would suggest then to go with spoons. 
So the pattern, you can start seeing there's a pattern here. You know, lots of blue, lots of silvery, white, some pink, purple tone, some patterns from time to time, gold or yellowish tone. Single hook or treble hook, that's your call. You are always, always trying to imitate the forage fish that the Wenanish eats. Highly effective as well. The third categories of uh, bait are the streamers. Go with this guy here. Streamers. Super effective. Actually, you can throw, you can, you know, you can use a fly rod with these, but you can also use your typical spinning equipment with, um, with streamers like this. So, for example, this one here has a weighted head, so it has a big head, lead, that is actually, you know, help you cast this type of, uh, of flies with uh, spinning equipment. The others definitely easier to use with a fly rod, but not impossible if to use on a spinning rod. And the way I use them is quite simple actually. I'm going to position here. So you have your line from the rods. Here at that point, what I'll do is I'll attach a three-way swivel. And I see, exactly the same. This is drawing skills guy, drawing skills. The second eyelet here will have a leader that will go to the streamer. And then the third eyelet here at the bottom, we will add a sinker to it, which actually is here. The, I like the tungsten because they're much smaller than actual um, lead. And they're very, they're, they're very dense. And when they hit the bottom, you actually can, when you were reading in, you can feel the tungsten dragging at the bottom, you know, especially if it's rocky, if you have lots of rock, you will feel all these little <laughs> bumps uh, at the bottom of the, uh, the, the, the river. The problem, the, the, the main disadvantage with this is you will lose a lot of sinkers, you know, doing this, especially if you're crawling back the sinker as you read in. What usually, what I'll do is I'll cast, I'll let the sinker drop, I'll wait there one minute, 30 seconds sometime, then I'll give it a good tug to, to have the sinker to jump off the bottom because what happens often is you'll have two rocks, you know, close to one another and the sinker will crawl in the space in between and get stuck there and then that's it. There isn't, you know, you will pull, pull, pull and, and something will break. And sometimes what you don't want to happen is you don't want your line to break here, you know, above the throw swivel. You want the sinker to break actually at the bottom. The sinker actually are made, you know, there on purpose where, because they know it's, a, it's an issue, so you have the sinker like this, if I can draw, and the attachment here is like something like that. And you can actually pinch the line here on the top part, and to me just pinching the line might be a little bit too, I don't find it secure enough, but what I'll do is I'll just do a simple overhand knot. Uh, through this and tie it up, cut the tie again, and then that's it. So I just make sure that this nut is quite weak. So if I get stuck and I need to pull hard, the only thing I lose is this part here. So I don't lose my streamer. The main advantage uh, I like, you know, during the day, you can when you start fishing, you can start high in the water, especially if you're seeing a lot of activities. You know, if there's a lot of fish jumping around you, that means the fish are very active they're moving, they're going up to the surface to get their food. So you can put, you know, the the, the, the distance from the three-way swivel to your weight, to your sinker, you can adjust that weight based on the depth. So let's say in the morning you can start high and as you progress during the day, you know, if you're not catching anything high, then you can drop, you say, oh, you know what, I'm gonna drop this two feet. Or you wanna try the bottom. You can choose at which depth you wanna fish depend on how long of a leader you give to your sinker. That's a good way to fish a streamer on your spinning fish, spin fishing equipment. There's another way also you can do. Uh, let's go over the second method. My suggestion is to add a spoon ahead of it. So your setup is going to look like something like this. So you'll have your main line, you know, going to your rod, which is probably, I don't know, 10, 15 pound test. 
attach it to a swivel, quick attach detach swivel. Here you hook up your spoon and at the back you have a leader that will go from your spoon to your fly. All right. The weight added by the spoon is going to ease up your cast. Because of the weight that you, you're adding, you'll actually be able to cast properly. The second added benefit is that the spoon is going to act as a, like a flasher. All these colors dazzling on the water will attract the fish attention, simulating a school of fish. And at the back, you'll have this one in the current that is badly swimming. And this, you know, when a fish sees something that is badly swimming, this is like, okay, that fish is about to die. This is an easy prey. This is the one I should be getting. And they will attack. Um, attack. The length, I would say on average, you don't want too much distance between the spoon and the fish. I would say about 24 to 36 inches should be enough. Uh, so that was the third category. The fourth category that I really like, and which is also very uh, cost effective, is to go with soft bait. And with soft bait, it's the same philosophy. You just want to try to imitate the forage fish that the Wananish are eating. Smelt. Um, so the pattern is the same. It's no same range of color. Dark, white belly, blue, purple tone. This one are a bit brownier. Uh, but they work. They really work. So now I want to share something... Um, with you. Uh, one day with a friend, we were fishing, and on the first, we were three, okay? On the first few casts, my first friend caught, using a streamer, he caught one. We, we were, we just arrived, I think it was his first or second cast. First, he arrived on the water, throw something like that, not exactly like this, but you know, uh, a streamer, and he, ca he catches one. A few minutes later, uh, my fr my second friend was <laughs> was now ready to start fishing. I opened my tackle box and I gave him this. And actually, my goal for this trip was to actually have him catch one. He never caught a land like salmon before, and my sole focus for that day was to have him catch one. Fifth cast with this lure, he's catching one, and that was our supper for that day. Great fish, delicious. <laughs> It was a beautiful, I was happy my friend caught his landlocked salmon. I would, so the rest of the day, I wanted just to focus on catching mine. We start fishing at 8.30. The first two fish got caught in the first half hour, okay? So by nine, I was the only one who didn't catch anything. I fished the entire day, the entire day until 5 p.m. And at 5 p.m. I was like, I must be doing something wrong. You know, I was canvassing the area really well. Uh, I, I was trying every, every tackle, my tackle box that I thought was, you know, worth it. And around 5, 5.30, there was one, you know, I was like, okay, there's something I didn't try. And it's just to change the size. You know, everything I was throwing was quite large. You know, I was throwing spoon size. I was try throwing this type. I was trying the uh, jerk bit, and they, they are all relatively on the same size. And then I was like, hey, I have an idea. Why not? Why not? Would I just try a drop shot technique? So using this little soft bit here, I improvise, similar to the streamer setup that I was showing earlier so with a three-way swivel. I improvised a quick drop shot thing. And as soon as I did the change, wham, I had my attack and I caught this beautiful, beautiful fish. So the moral of that story is what I think fishes are like humans and they have their preferences. You will catch some individual with large spoon, some others with jerk bait, some other were soft bait, some other were small, some other with colorful, some other were, you know, the, the, it's like beef or chicken question. What do you prefer?
you have a preference and fishes do as well within the same species if, you know don't don't be afraid to experiment after a couple of hours you know if nothing is working and you're confident that there are fish in the waters that you're fishing then you have to think about about you know what what could you be possibly doing wrong what are you not doing you need to think about that is there something i should do to get those fishes because those fish are there and they're not biting at what you're throwing at them it means they don't like what you're giving them and they want something else if it's not the color change the speed at which you're retrieving the lure change the depth at which you're fishing or change the size and to me what happens to be to work that day was just ch changing the size you know like everything i was throwing was large and just coming up with this and probably also reaching a deeper uh, part of the pool because I was using a sinker. So like, you know, going deep, small, give me results in that day. So don't get too hung up on one specific bait or one specific lure. I think within the same species of fish, they will react differently to different lure. The, the main advice I can give you here and, you know, in life in general is have grit be flexible, learn and adapt. Uh, it can't be more pl it can't be more plain and simple than that. I know it's easier said than done in a lot of situations in life, but when it comes to fishing, it's not that more complicated, folks. It's not that more complicated. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned a few things here. Let me know how it goes on the water with you. What type of fish are you catching? Uh, how did it go? What type of lure? good day bad day let me know in the comment i want to hear from you i want to hear about your stories it's always interesting to, uh, to to be engaged with you in conversation that's always good to hear so consider subscribing thumbs up notification bell peace see ya